Hello boys and girls, this is Matt from Armstrong Gaming. Alright, so we are back with a new series. Uh, there is a few reasons behind this series. Um, I've had a couple of changes with a computer crash where I've lost a couple of games. So those series are now dead in the water and those movies and episodes have been deleted from YouTube. So in their replacement, we are doing Torchlight 2. Torchlight 2 is a game that is based on its predecessor predecessor, sorry, uh, which was Touchlight 1, which was based off Diablo 1 and Diablo 2. The guys who worked on Diablo 1 and Diablo 2 ended up making Runic Games. Um, that's the company. They put, make this game. They are very good at what they do. This game was referred to as, at one point or another, what Diablo 3 could have been. Diablo 3 being a different style uh, of the same type of game. The game's concept is get the loot. It is focused completely on kill the creatures, get the loot. Um, and you'll also see that I'll put up some Diablo 3 videos as well and I'll talk about how these two games correspond and are completely different to each other but yet very eerily similar. Alright, so we're playing a character called Sir Smash because I'm playing an engineer and they tend to, the ability that I use smashes the ground. I didn't want to be any more fun, you know, any more silliness than that. Um, I'm going to go Hawk. I generally like the flying creatures because it just seems natural for me. Uh, Cookie seems like a good name. We're going to go with that. Uh, let's play it on Veteran. Uh, I've played this game a few times. Um, I've played it to some pretty high levels. I should be okay, and there should be enough kills and deaths that you guys are entertained. Alright, cool. So, I'm kind of hoping that the music for this is at a, an appropriate level. Um, just because I want you guys to be able to hear what's going on in the game, but also be able to hear me. And I'm having a few issues with my audio. If you're listening to this and you've got some feedback, I definitely love it. Um, it is very well received. I love criticism. I love, you know, do this to improve your game or your videos by doing this. I love that sort of level of feedback. In fact, I haven't even watched this before. Uh, usually I just go, yep, whatever, cool. This has a storyline, but I don't know it because I'm just like, I'm focused on killing stuff because I played Diablo 3 at around the same time and I was just like, there's a storyline. That's great. I want to kill the mobs. Not focused on anything except murdering. Murdering is business 101. Alright, cool. So, this is interesting. Um, Alright, we got some sorcerer chick here, uh, fighting some mechanical dude, and a whole bunch of random peon goods, and then there's a guy with a sword. Alright, so this is probably like the introduction to like all the types of base level characters. Um, this is a very heavily modded game. Um, yeah, no, I'm not watching that anymore. <laughs> um, through the Steam Network, you can get, through their workshop, a whole bunch of mods. Um, so this is obviously just a little starting zone. You've got your quests over here. You've got your inventory panel. Uh, shortcut is I. I'm playing this on the keyboard. Uh, there's no controller support. Um, but this type of game I don't like to play with controllers anyway because it's not a shooter. You've got your skills list. Which is listed here. Every class has three major skills. I can hear the music pretty well. So let's mute music. Apply. Resume. Uh, skills are listed here. There's Blitz skill, Construction skill, and the GS skill. Um, so build around shields, build around construction that you're an engineer, and Blitz based on fire and damage. Um, all got some cool things. I've got some favorites. This is one of my favorite classes. So I'll have some stuff that I normally do. Every class always starts off with at least a ability unlocked. Um, and you can sort of base it off that. So I've got an access to Flame Hammer. That's what it does. It's one of my favorite abilities. I love the AOE, Area of Effect, in case you don't know the shorthand from WoW and other MMOs. Um, and that's what I love about this. Uh, that ability. Yeah, the quest log is there. And on this side, you've got three ability, three panels, I should say. The pet panel, which they've only got three inventory slots. Um, your character panel, on which every time you level up, you gain five stat points and one skill point. So, yeah. 
and the last but not least is your arcane statistics which tells you everything about all of your stuff so if you're like-minded like me where you like a little bit of statistics and you like to look at it you can tell you how long you played for average time per level yada 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 all of that stuff cool alrighty uh, I'm going to try and keep these videos pretty short this one's going to be not a lot of what's going on we're just going to get to the first town it's going to be a short quick introductory video uh, first guy here has a whole bunch of uh, inventory uh, it's basically a shop uh, I should stop being silly they've all got four tabs and you've got f three you have a spell inventory list which you can have active four slots and those spells can be passive or active passive means they're always active um, and they always have an effect and other spells can have a activated effect where you got to cast and use mana or something else your pet can also have these things uh, I'm just gonna quickly show you the rest of that before I go back into that he's got miscellaneous items which come under here in the consumables inventory for yourself you know healing potions mana potions teleport wayport scrolls whatever you want to call them uh, and identification scrolls uh, the game also has an order identify um, uh, which proc at levels and then weapons and armor is segregated into their own inventory panel here but are on the same one under your character page you also have what is something that was very familiar from Diablo 2 is weapon set and by using the exact same key which is the key W that was even used in Diablo 2 you can easily switch between two weapon sets so you can have a sword and a shield or a gun and a gun or a shotgun and then the other one you can have something completely different and just switch back and forth between the two by pressing W so if the circumstances need you to be ranged you can switch the range with a quick press of a button and not using any inventory control to do that beyond pre-setting everything up alright so other things that are also likewise from Diablo and Diablo 2 Diablo 3 is sockets some but not all items and weapons have sockets on them uh, you can see there they're empty I will pick up sockets uh, items which are gems skulls other little trinkets that go inside it. and each of them will have an effect based on what they are what level that individual trinket is and where you put them so your weapons will have a different effect to armor so the ones you put in weapons will have a direct output to damage other ones in armor will do another effect of some descriptor heal mana recovery um, add to your resistance add to your armor add to an ability you know they have all different effects um, so this game has you know, crossbows arrows cannons uh, wands uh, staves you know, pistols hammers knives throwing kunai um, I'm playing with very simplistic mods I'm playing with a mod called synergies uh, and the corresponding ones to that all right I'm back so we just had a little bit of a real life um, thing that we had to take care of all right so mobs in this uh, you can just hold down to attack and so forth uh, chests are highlighted which is really good um, that's sort of what loot pops up as it's all color coded uh, god I think it's similar to that of Borderlands with green blue purple and orange um, you can see the little level bar and the uh, unidentified wand that's going to be useful in boosting up my gold oh, I was talking about mods um, that's what I was doing um, so the mods are IROC uh, there's an elite Rattlin um, is called synergies there's a whole series of the synergies series uh, I run the base one which you need to run all of them the uh, high loot so you'll see that I get a bit more loot than most people um, I think I'm running it but it's not working at the moment I'm running bigger inventories but it doesn't look like it's working uh, which is fine these things happen uh, so yeah as I said we're just going to do the first quest to get to the main town uh, it's really nice and, tr and trivial the first quest uh, need some more mana use my abilities go with my man do 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 um so yeah I've turned off a lot of the there we go level up um static you know how much damage each swing does so only criticals will show up guys so if you're wondering what those numbers are referring to it's my damage and their criticals or um, certain types of strikes I can't like critical death blows or something like that I'm not too sure alright so um, your pet does damage as well as is 
as well as doing other cool things like you can send them to town to pick up stuff. Um, that's really helpful instead of teleporting back to town you can literally just send your pet back to town and continue adventuring and it's pretty easy to move stuff across from your inventory to your pet's inventory uh, I believe it's just shift click which I'll show you guys in a few moments um, so that's how you should be doing your inventory control you should be looking at giving everything to your pet that you do not want and then everything else you should be carrying and whenever your pet's inventory is full you should be sending them to town to pick up all of your normals make sure you got some potions because they can pick up potions they can pick up town portals um, if you find you're in trouble you can portal back to town I'm pretty sure like 95% sure that if you teleport to town and your pet is at town or is going to town they will automatically come back um, and then you'll have them but you'll be in town so you won't really need them at that point but it just means that if you want to portal to town grab them back and then hit the portal back to where you were you instantly have your pet back so it's a good little tactic so golden keys unlock golden chests you know go figure there's a little bit of old school like 1990s gaming style where the blue key opens the blue door um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit like that. Uh, in terms of graphic it, graphics, it is a lot less of a requirement um, than Diablo 3. Um, it's even probably a little bit less than Diablo 2. Like, graphically, it's not the most pretty game I've ever seen. You, you've got nothing when it comes to Skyrim or anything like that. There's no little cut scenes or variations or blurred animations or effects. Um, it is literally your click and point and kill game um, it is run of the mill but it's fully customizable uh, you can even get access to the workshop um, I can't remember what it's called uh, guts or something um, if memory serves which allows you to mod your own game so if you have any skills in computer programming you can use it there's tutorials up on the web all over the place YouTube's a great resource for learning how to do mods and you can literally make your own mods for this game and you can develop your own classes in fact that's been one of the major things that me and one of my friends were deciding on doing until I moved overseas alright so as I said before you get your five stat points and your one skill point per level I'm gonna try and stop at every level and go blah, blah, blah. Uh, so shortcuts for that was C for character page and S for skills um, obviously certain things have level unlocks uh, level 3 Heavy lifting is usually one of the ones I go for because it gives you an attack speed, but only while you're requiring, uh, holding certain weapons. So that'd be a cannon, a pole arm, a great sword, a great hammer, or a great axe. I generally stick out of four of those five. The cannon is not one of the things I use. Uh, I'm going to be using it because uh, attack speed is really good. Um, and there we go. There's my first skill points, man. Uh, in terms of these, so smash. Um, I'm going to be basing it, I'm going to hold off on them. I generally hold on my stat points for a while until I find the game starts to get to that ramped up effect where it's it's a little bit too difficult for you with your lowered stats. And then you know, items have uh, particular requirements and one of the requirements is st uh, your stat points or a level. So here, here we go, perfect example. Requires level three or 22 strength. If you meet one of these two requirements, you may use this item. Um, Considering I am using Great Hammers as one of my main weapons, I will be selecting that as my main thing. And as soon as I hit level 3 or 22 strength, I can use it. Experience and gold rewards are listed there, and a little bit of textual base. Because it is a textual base game and not visually, uh, oh, sorry, audio, um, it can be a little difficult for you to follow the plot especially if you're like me you're like oh look that thing popped up yep ignore continue questing um, so that's a bit of a problem every class has their own charge bar you know, let's talk quickly about this I'm gonna equip my gear and then we will call it an episode alright so engineer tar charge bars um, as you damage enemies you can gain up to a maximum of five charges if charges are available certain skills like flame hammer will consume a charge to significantly increase its power. Some skills consume all available charges, while others help to gain charges more rapidly. 
If you're familiar with WoW, think Rogue. Uh, think uh, Druid Cat form, Feral Cat form, where you attack to build up points, and then you spend those points to do additional damage on one of your other things. So it's resource generation and resource expenditure. So that bar will go up and down. I don't pay attention to the bar. I hit the buttons, I swing the things, things die. It makes me happy. Uh, other things we're going to be looking at is damage per second and taking items based on damage per second. So this Vemna sword, which is a one-handed sword, which doesn't give me any of my bonuses, because uh, it's not a great sword, is okay. 55, it's an upgrade. This one's 102. It's two-handed, as you can see highlighted by the blue. Uh, it's a great hammer, which is one of the items I can use to give my bonuses. Alright, we've got two types of pants. Uh, one gives plus three to physical armor, my physical armor listed there. And the other one gives me 42 health as well as two strength bonus attributes. I'll bring up my character page for my strength bonus. With my strength of 15, I can do with this current weapon 122 to 224 damage. That's the range. So all damage should be within that range, determined by dice rolls which are generated by the in-game um, basically in-game random genera generator. So we're going to be going this one because first of all I need health, I'm going to be taking the majority of the damage, uh, not the pet, and second of all that extra strength will boost that base level damage. So there we go, it boosted it by two and four, three respectively. Not a lot, still pretty good. And you can see there it's characterized as blue, 15 plus two. We get the two from our pants, pretty simple stuff. Now I talked very early about uh, socketable items. Here is one, an Ice Ember Spec. It's a level 8 item, socketable. If it's put into an armor slash a trinket, it'll give you 8 ice armor. In a weapon, give you 7 ice damage. Really cool. Um, and they will level up as you go through the game. Uh, little thing to notice, this little cross, red cross, yep, you can see it next to the mouse, yep, in the little, little corner, yep, that's the one. I can't use it. That means your class does not have access to this or you don't fit the requirements. I don't fit either of those requirements. I might be able to use the one, I'm not to terribly sure. Might might be. Um, but yes, um, uses level six or 26 focus, which I have neither. Oh, here we go. Here's the expanded inventories. Um, there's that mod, gives you three extra inventories. So you can just keep going. All right. Um, Generally here, there is no um, du durability on your items, um, so by losing, which is something that happens in Diablo 3 and Diablo 2 if I remember correctly, your items have durability and will break or, or become less effective as they are used more and more, and the only way to do that is to visit a blacksmith and get them repaired. This game doesn't have that. Go hard, damage often. Alright, so I'm going to quickly show you, where is it, P for pet, oh, close that down, CP, I said, no, sorry, IP, inventory for I, P for pet, and to move it across, you can see shift click to transfer, shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click, done, the pet has it now, so when I say return, there's a little button, it'll be green when you're outside of the village, uh, or the town, and you can send them off and do their thing. Alright, last thing I'm going to cover before we end this video, the stashes. There's a stash and a shared stash. Shared stash revolves around all your characters across the entire game. So if you start playing another class, they'll have access to this stash. Otherwise, your normal stash is this character only. So, because there's nothing in this stash, because I haven't been playing this character until right now, um, there's nothing in there. Shared stash should have stuff in there. Nope, it does not. Alright, cool. I know I have other characters, but obviously it's been wiped since I've lost my computer, which is un which is very uh, unfortunate. Um, these things happen. Alright, cool. So, one last thing. Pet, defensive, aggressive, and passive. Passive means they won't do anything. Defensive means they will defend you. And aggressive means they will seek out enemies. Uh, my pet does like bugger all damage, so I'm just going to chuck him on defensive. I do the majority of the damage, I want him to defend me. When I'm starting to go down, he'll jump in. Cool. Alright, so 
that's your right click, that's your left click, these are your number clicks, there's 10 slots. Game is pretty straightforward and standard. I'm going to be using only the mods that I've currently said that I'm using the Synergy mods, High Loot, Big Inventories, and the base one. And that is pretty much it. I can't, I don't think I've got any more on because I want to try and keep the game as true to the game itself as possible rather than you going out and saying, Oh, what mods are you running? Because I need to run those two because I can't play this game without your walkthrough. I'm only using basic ones. If you want to go and get more and get more classes, go nuts, go hard, but don't expect me to know your new class or new anything because I don't have access to it. Uh, gonna spend a point in flame hammer because I love it. It's my fave, and we're gonna end it there. This is Matt from Armstrong Gaming. This is Torchlight Two. I hope you've enjoyed this new series. I plan on continuing to do this for a very long time. I love this game a lot, and this is gonna be my how to play series. All right, we will catch you next time. Take care.